Hope Center of Christ. It's another beautiful day for Amen. worshiping the Lord. Amen. Amen. Oh, there are so many things we want to say to him, but most of all, we're just going to say thank you. I love you. I adore you. I worship you and you alone. Oh, yes, Lord, we do. We worship you and you alone. Oh, God who you are, majestic, powerful, all things, you can do all things, nothing, nothing, nothing is impossible for you to do, Thank you. who you are, merciful, you forgive absolutely everything and anything when we come to you and we say, Lord, forgive me, you forgive, and you not only forgive, you love, and you wrap your arms around us and you put us on your shoulders and you carry us home rejoicing, saying, this is the lamb that I sought, the lamb who was lost, who I have found. Let us rejoice and be glad. Who you are, God, who you are. Majestic, merciful, loving, and oh God, yes, you are our Abba, our Father. Thank you, Lord, that you breathe your presence, your spirit, your power into us. Who are we that you are even mindful of us, much less that you would give your life for us, much less you would give your Holy Spirit to fill us and to carry us and to give us the strength and the power to be your servants. Thank you, Lord. We love you and we worship you. Amen. Revelation 9 says, Then I heard something that sounded like a shout of a vast crowd, or the roar of a mighty ocean wave, or the crash of a loud thunder. These were people, people all around the world from century to century saying, Hallelujah, for the Lord our God, the Almighty reigns. Can you say it? Hallelujah for the Lord our God, the Almighty reigns. Hallelujah.
the omnipotent, the almighty. He reigns. Amen. Amen. One of my favorite psalms. Where are you, Blake? Psalms 30. Come on, Blake. Go ahead, Scott. I will exalt you, Lord. For you have lifted me out of the depths and did not let my enemies gloat over me. Lord, my God, I called to you for help and you healed me. You, Lord, brought me up from the rim of the dead and you spared me from going down to the pit. Sing praises of the Lord, you his faithful people. Praise his holy name for his anger lasts only for a moment, but his favor lasts a lifetime. Weeping may endure for the night, but rejoicing comes in the morning. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Your weeping may endure for a night, but your joy is coming. It's coming in the morning.
secure, I said, I will never be shaken. Lord, when you favored me, you made my royal mountain stand firm. But when you hid your face, I was dismayed. To you, Lord, I called. To the Lord, I cried for mercy. What is gained if I am silent? If I go down to the pit, will the dust praise you? Will it proclaim your faithfulness? Hear, O oh Lord, and be merciful to me. Lord, be my help. You've turned my wailing into dancing. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. first Sunday of the month when we always have communion here at Hope Center of Christ. And for those of you who've never had communion with us today, we want you to know that you are invited. We call this what's called in theological terms an open table, and that means if you know Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior, we welcome you to come and partake of our communion. It's called the intincture method. That simply means you will be offered the bread a wafer you will take it when it comes when you and the, the pastor will say to you this is the body of Christ broken for you and then you will take it you will dip it into the juice and 
take them together. The pastor will say to you when he or she offers you the juice, they will say, this is my, the, the blood of Christ shed for you. So that is what we do, and that's how you take communion here. You'll come forward. We have two different stations, and we want to invite you to come and partake in this blessed, blessed event, being able to have the communion of Christ and to celebrate and to remember the price he paid for you. You didn't come cheap. You didn't go to the thrift store. You didn't go to a garage sale. He paid the price of his life for you. That's how much he loves you. So I hope you will under, you will appreciate that today and have a chance as you partake of the communion to say, thank you, Lord, for loving me that much. So now let us pray. Lord God Almighty, we thank you. What a price you paid for us. We didn't realize we were worth much, if anything, but to be worth your life just for us. Oh, Lord. It's almost hard to, un to com comprehend and to accept and even believe, but thank you, thank you, thank you, Lord, from the bottom of our heart that we are loved that much. So now, Lord, we, we ask that you forgive us. Forgive us, Lord, for those things that we've said or done that maybe you didn't approve of or things that we should have done that we didn't do that would have pleased you. Thank you, Lord, that you do forgive. That's what this is all about, being washed clean, completely new again. Thank you, Lord. Amen. And now the pastors who are assisting me, if you'll come forward, please. And while they're making their way up here, I just want to tell, remind you of what happened that night our Lord was arrested at the Last Supper. It was a Passover, Passover meal. And as they do in every Passover Seder meal, Jesus picked up the bread and he said, from now on, and he broke it. From now on, he said, whenever you partake of the bread at this meal, remember this is my body that is broken for you. And in the same manner, when the cup went around, he picked up the cup and he said, and from now on, whenever you drink from this cup, remember, this is my blood, which is shed for you. So now you may come forward and partake of our communion.
precious moments release all of your fears and doubt to the Lord he died so that you may have victory victory over death victory over sickness victory over darkness victory over financial problems victory over temptation and many 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 more things this holy communion we remember the Lord for he gave us this victory when he gave us his body and when he gave his blood believe in God's love for you loves you so much. He bore your sicknesses and mine. We are redeemed. We are forgiven. Thank you, Father, so very much for this precious moment. Thank you for the faith that you have put in us. Thank you for our health. Thank you for the miracles Thank you for your divine strength and blessings. Dear Heavenly Father, we owe it all to you. Come in and stay forevermore. We give you all glory, all honor in Jesus Christ. Precious name. Amen. I'd like to read scripture today from 1 Peter 5 of verses 4 through 10. And when the great shepherd appears, you will receive a crown of never-ending glory and honor. In the same way, you who are younger must accept the authority of the elders. And all of you, dress yourselves in humility as you relate to one another. God opposes the proud, but gives grace to the humble. So humble yourselves under the mighty power of God. And at all times, and at the right time, he will lift you up in honor. Give all your worries and cares to God for he cares about you. Stay alert. Watch out for your enemy, the devil. He prowls around like a roaring lion, looking for someone to devour. Stand firm against him and be strong in your faith. Remember that your family of believers all over the world is going through the same kind of suffering you are. In his kindness, God called you to share his eternal glory 
by means of Christ Jesus. So after you have suffered a little while, he will restore, support, and strengthen you. And he will place you on a firm foundation. All power to him forever. Amen. And may God add his blessing to the reading of his word. Amen. We like to say hello and welcome to our guests. If you're here for the very first time and you parked in the neighborhood, you may want to move your car so you won't get a citation. And there's a local library parking lot about a minute and a half from here, and you could uh, park your car there. But we'd like to welcome you, and please enjoy the service today. Those that are viewing us via the internet, we'd like to welcome you as well. And if you're ever in Southern California, please come and visit us here at Hope Center of Christ. We will be preparing our hearts for our tithes and our offerings, so if you want to get those together right now, feel free to move around. You have a connection card in front of you. It's an orange connection card. We would love to hear from you. We would love to know how you're being blessed, what some of your prayer requests may be, so that we can stand with you in that gap and intercede on your behalf. Now, Pastor Sheila has always told us that we need to read our scripture every day. We need to find a place somewhere each month where we can serve. And we always are here to worship. So please come. Women of Hope Bible Study, I think they've started a new series of going through the Bible. Pastor Sheila, it is for anyone who needs to know how to start understanding the Bible, correct? So if you've always had questions about the Bible, Women of Hope, please come and get that training from Pastor Sheila and the other ladies that are also participating in the Women of Hope. The introduction to the Bible is going to be the first class in Bible overview and uh, how the Old Testament and the New Testament are organized, translations, pros and cons, and the purpose and preferences and reading the Bible and cross-references and commentaries and all of those things you'll be going through at the Women of Hope. Not one, one at one time, but over a period of maybe six months to a year. So please feel free to participate. And uh, if you are not able to participate and you're having a rough time during the week, our dear friend Katie has put together a website for you to get your dose of Christian motivation. And it's from hcochopeseekers.wordpress.com. And you can get your daily devotion from there. Singer Women for Christ, they say you guys are going to be having a brunch in September. And that's going to be uh, determined later on the date. But you would want to see Susan Austin. Holy Communion Potluck. Hey, I look forward to the potluck and the Holy Communion. Today is going to be very, 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 very special. And that is because we want to recognize all of you for how you've given of your time, your talent, and your treasure to serve the kingdom of God and to serve Hope Center of Christ. So please stay back. We have a wonderful appreciation, potluck, and a, a gift for each and every one of you. So please come and enjoy the fellowship. Amen. Amen and amen. Let us pray. Dear Heavenly Father, your presence is in this place, and we thank you. And dear Heavenly Father, you give us everything we need all the time. Give us the vision to recognize your blessings. Give us the trust to give to you our tithes and our offerings so that we may grow 
in our strength, our faith, and receive our blessings, dear Heavenly Father, that you have stored upon us. As we give, let us look at it, at it as a seed that we are planting into your kingdom, dear Heavenly Father, that would bear much fruit. Thank you, dear God. We give you glory, glory and honor in Jesus' name. hands this morning and declare from our hearts that we can do all things through Christ Jesus. Amen. I love to hear children. We do have handouts. So, Sarah, while you're up there with your Starbucks cup, ah, get someone to help you. <laughs> She's, are you going to hand them off to mom? That's what kids usually do, don't they? Hand things off to mom or dad. Well, good morning. It's so good to be back with you. I miss, miss, miss being here last week. But it was a joyous occasion. Some of you may know that my beloved grandchildren, whom you hear me go on about ad nauseum, um, 
are on their way to Minnesota. They're, they're moving to Minneapolis. They're halfway there as we speak. So between the baptism of my grandson last Sunday and saying goodbye to my granddaughters and my new brand new grand, grandson this week, it was not an easy week, a blessed week, full of love, full of tears. It started out me comforting all of my sons, my big sons, and they're big boys, and their, their wives with their heads on my shoulder crying, <laughs> they're leaving, they're going, and I said yes, and we'll all be okay, and then, then it was grandma's turn to have shed a few tears. But it's, and then I will tell you, little JJ, who's um, away for vacation this week. He's just barely three. And he is, as I like to say, a heart full. And um, he saw tears in grandma's eyes and he right away looked right into me, his eyes bored into mine and he threw his arms around my neck and gave, gave me a kiss. And so, you know, thank you Lord for, for all the kisses and the love and the time. So that's where we are today, and I'm wrapping up Psalm um, 23. It's been a joy for me to go through this and to prepare for you. We have today and then two more weeks. Uh, next week will be on Surely Goodness and Mercy Shall Follow Me All the Days of My Life. What a wonderful, wonderful promise that one is. And the last one is, And I Will Dwell in the House of the Lord Forever, and we're going to talk about heaven. So I'm studying up and reading about heaven. So we're going to really dive into that as much as we can in one Sunday. Maybe we'll take it a few weeks later. But Pastor Harold and I are planning on September 10. That's the Sunday following Labor Day weekend. We are going to start <clears throat> going through the Bible here. We're going to be hitting the major Bible stories that have been identified by scholars as the ones that are most important to know. I believe in doing this in order because when you tell a story, it's good to start at the beginning and go in order. It's much easier to see how it all fits together. It's, to me, that makes the best sense as a teacher. And, and we will use those stories as a foundation for some powerful spiritual principles that, that God will teach us through that. And that's, we're going to start that on September 10. So I want you to have that to look forward to. But today is Psalm 23. It's our ninth, ninth time in this psalm, verse 5, but our ninth lesson. You know, having shed a few tears this week and seen my sons shed tears, when we are afraid and we're hurt, when we walk through the valley of the shadow of death, even then, when we have to say goodbye to people that we love, this psalm says he comforts us, yes, he comforts us with his rod and his staff. And we've learned what a powerful, powerful principle that is because the rod drives away things that can hurt us. He comforts us with a rod and the staff, he pulls us close to his heart. Those are the things we need when we're to be comforted when we're going through a, the valley of the shadow of death. The other thing that the good shepherd does when you go through the valley of the shadow of death is he anoints your head with oil. And we learned that the shepherds did this to protect the sheep from flies, I say, from lies, from the enemy that can burrow into the mind and drive the sheep crazy, that can drive you and I crazy, those lies of the enemy that can steal our, and destroy our peace and our love and that can truly harm us, harm our mental state. But he covers, when the enemy whispers lies, he covers your ears, he covers your mind with his anointing truth. Isn't that a wonderful promise? This is all embedded here in this, this uh, passage of scripture today. We are on my cup overflows. It's a good one. It's a good one. Because even when you walk through the valley of the shadow of death, even when you think you've lost more than you can bear. Loss. Boy. People, I'm, I, as a pastor, I've had my own share of loss, but I've, as I've talked to many of you. Some of you have been faced with one loss after another after another. And sometimes it feels like, can I bear one more loss? But even then, even then, he fills your cup to overflowing. That's a promise. The good shepherd, he showers you 
with more than enough. He drank from the cup of death so your life will run over with his life. That's in your notes there. What does this mean when we say that your cup runs over? Well, it means that we're saying you're satisfied, you're content. You have more than enough blessings. It means your life spills over with joy, love, contentment. So I ask you, do you want your life? Do you want your cup to run over? Well, then we're going to ask the Good Shepherd to help us. And I'm going to use a, I'm going to put this down for a minute. Actually, Jim, can you just put that on freeze frame and come up here and be my, my other pair of hands, my husband, Jim? Come on up, Jim. He's not happy with me. He doesn't like to do this. So give him a wonderful round of applause, which he won't like either. Just stand there like Vanna for a minute. And here, you can put that somewhere or hold it. I don't care. Just stand there for a minute. Thank you, Jim. He does this well, doesn't he? All right. I want you to pay attention to this cup that's standing over there by Jim. And is if he, I ask him to pour water into it the way it is now, what's going to happen? The water is not going to go in, is it? So the first thing you want to ask the Good Shepherd to do is turn your cup over. Thank you, Jim. Turn your cup over. Turn it right side up. You can't expect, now you can't, okay, back here. You can't expect your cup to ever get full if it's turned upside down. All right? Now what does that mean spiritually? What does that mean in your life? That means that there are a lot of people who are walking around and your hearts are closed off. You're not open to being filled. You've, clo you've turned your life, your heart, upside down. You've closed it off. Me, it's, this happens because, and I've seen it happen in so many lives, maybe there's been one disappointment too many in your life or one hurt too much, and then you blame God, or you think God is not going to fill me up anyway, he's not going to give me the things I've asked him for, and, I, and you stop believing, you stop being open to receiving the blessings of God. It happens to lots and lots of people. Some people think they're not worthy of the blessings. Some people are think, I haven't done enough, or I have a life that's that's... God doesn't love me anymore. I've seen and heard that from people as well. God's removed his blessings from me because I don't deserve them. I haven't earned them. Some people think they lack the self-esteem to be able to achieve the success in their life. They don't think they can possibly be successful in life or in love. They don't think enough of themselves. They for whatever reason, they've heard that message. And so what happens is when you begin to believe this, you've, in essence, turned your cup upside down. And their cup is not going to run over if your cup is upside down. God has blessings he wants to pour into your life. So the first thing you want to do is open your heart to it. Open yourself. Believe. God, I believe. I want you to fill my life with your blessings. So, let's turn our cup upside, right side up. And you can't do that yourself. We need to ask God to give you that courage, to give you that faith, to, to open your heart to him and his blessings. So, hon, would you, oh, you've done it. You've turned it right side up. You know, thank you. Okay. If your cup is turned right side up, what is it being filled with? Well, maybe. Now, Jim, I just want you to do this, and then you can go back to your camera. I want you to fill the glass to here, please, right around there. And then just set that. Yeah. Thank you. Love you. Give him another hand. So 
So I filled this with water, which is, which is a good thing. And I just want you to take a look at it, okay? That's all I'm gonna, I want to say about it right now. I'm going to put it back up here. We'll come back to that later, which is why I excuse my husband so he didn't have to stand there the whole time. But what are you pouring into your cup? I love sugar. I love sugar. I got to tell you, after I said goodbye to those grandbabies of mine, I sat down on the couch, and I don't remember ever doing this before in my life, but I started to consume anything in the house that had any kind of sugar in it. I mean, crazy stuff. And I'm going, what else is there in this house that's got sugar in it? <laughs> and I just, I, rum, 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 rum. <laughs> oh, that's right. I had those gummy worms for JJ because for potty training. I can replace those. I'll go to the store and buy them new gummy worms. So I went and I consumed a whole bag of gummy worms. Um, 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 um. What else is there in the house? Cereal. Okay. I mean, you know, really, have you ever done that? I, this is not like me. I mean, I, but I, I love sugar. You can imagine, I didn't feel too good. I, I did crash. I fell asleep. The sugar gave me a sugar high, and then I crashed. And, and I woke up later going, oh. But that was what my, that's what I did. That's what I did. Sugar won't satisfy. Sugar is empty calories. We know that. And so the point is, many of us are going through life feeling unsatisfied. Feeling unsatisfied. Your cup isn't feel, you don't feel like your cup runs over because you're not pouring the right stuff into your life. And I'm going to talk specifically about secularism right now because we live in a secular world. And it's really, there's nothing wrong per se with secularism, and that's what I want you to hear. I'm going to equ equate secularism to sugar, okay? Because just like sugar and cake are harmless treat when taken in small doses, not like what I did, that was not a healthy thing to do, Secularism, secularism in some secular media can be a good diversion for you. There's nothing wrong per se with it. However, in fact, I think it's good for Christians to be aware of what's being said in the secular world. To not be aware, to have our head in the sand can, some, can make it, we can no longer relate to other people. And we need to be aware. We need to know what's going on in the secular world. However, I would give you this caution as your pastor. Be aware. Be aware of what the world is saying when you watch and listen to secular media. And beware. So be aware and beware. Beware. Weigh it against God's word. You know, so look at it and say, what are they really saying? Oh, well, that's not what the Bible says. So my point is, be careful because why? If you consume and you drink secularism to the point of neglecting the sustenance, the true sustenance of the word and prayer and worship, you will likely feel that you are feeling dissatisfied and unfull filled. That's all I'm saying. Okay? You'll hear some pastors who will say, well, you can't watch this, you can't do that. When I grew up, my grandmother, I had a grand, we were told, my parents told me when we went back to Iowa to visit my grandmother, don't tell her you go to see the movies. We would go see a Disney movie, but don't, don't tell grandma you went to see a movie. You just didn't do that. You know? So there's, there's, that, there's that extreme, I would call it. And yet, and so, but we need to also be aware that secular media can be, can not necessarily be the healthiest for us. You have to be careful. There's stuff out there that will not be healthy for you, spiritually speaking. And um, <clears throat> so I'm, but most of all, you don't want to neglect, you don't want to use, make sure it's not taking the place of your Bible reading, of your worship, of your love relationship with your God, don't 
don't trade in that time with God for a secular diversion or entertainment. Be careful of that and weigh it against God's word. So what are you pouring into your life? What are you pouring into your cup? You see, the cup that, um, uh, the cup that runs over is a cup that's turned right side up. A cup that runs over is a cup that's being filled with sustenance that satisfies prayer, worship, and God's word. A cup that runs over is a cup that is being filled by the good shepherd who is filling your cup. The Bible, the, in the Bible, the cups is a symbol for various things, but the two main ones are suffering. The cup represents suffering as a symbol for suffering, and it's a symbol for salvation. And isn't that the cup that we partook of today? The cup of the communion is a cup that symbolizes suffering, the suffering of Christ, and also our salvation. You see, this is, this is why this, this psalm is so beautiful. You, did you know that the shepherds carried wine with them? They still do today, brandy, something like that, because in the storms of life, the sheep were, would be subject to the wind and the cold, and it would kill them. And so the shepherd had to stay really close to his sheep. And when the shepherd noticed that a storm had hit, the shepherd would see that the sheep was starting to shiver and the, the sheep was in danger of losing his, his or her life. And he would take a little bit of the wine from his flask that he carried with him and pour it down the throat of the, of the sheep enough to save his life. The wine, in this case, was used as a, to save, to save the life of a sheep. And Jesus, when he broke his, had his blood spilled for us, he said, the wine, this wine is your, is your salvation. Think about it. Jesus said, from now on, whenever you drink from this cup, remember, this is my blood which was shed for you. And that was when, at the Last Supper, what happened right after the Last Supper? He was arrested in the garden. But prior to his arrest, he was praying. And what did he pray? Lord, if it be possible, take this cup from me. Jesus didn't want to drink of that cup. Jesus didn't want to hang on that cross. Would you? No, and even though he knew he was the son of God, even though he knew that he would, ha he would be resurrected, he knew that the pain and the suffering would be almost unbearable. And indeed, it brought him to the point of death, and it even meant that he was, had to go to hell. They call, we, and we know that because that was how, when he bore our sins on him, he could no longer be with God, unified with his father, Three in one. He, they had to be in hell. That's why they said Jesus descended into hell. And that's why it was that separation. He prayed, if it be possible, take this cup from me. The cup is a cup of suffering. And even then, when they, the, they came to arrest Jesus, what did Peter do? He took his sword and he lopped off the ear of one of the soldiers, right? Do you remember that story? And Jesus said to Peter, he said, put your sword away. Shall I not drink the cup the Father has given me? As hard as it was for Jesus to do it, he still did what he knew he had it to do. He was willing to do it. And you have there in your notes in italicis, Jesus drank from the cup of suffering. And as a result, he is the only one who can fill your cup with salvation, the cup of of the spirit the cup of the spirit so make sure your cup the cup that runs over is one that's turned right side up the cup that runs over is one that is filled with god's love and his and the shepherd is the one who fills it and the shepherd is the only one who can fill your cup so how full is your cup because jesus didn't come he didn't give his life so that your cup would be half Full. That is not his will for your life. That your life is half full. 
This cup is only half full. Jesus came because he wanted it to be what? And this is what he does. He wants your life to be full to the point of overflow. The cup that is overflowing is one that where the, sh the good shepherd has filled it for you. And I want to talk to you one more thing about this overflowing business and how it, 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 what it matters because of biblical customs that you may or may not know. But in the Middle East, when someone would come and they would stop by their tent <laughs> and look for lodging or their house, they would be, it, the custom was to invite somebody in. And then they would offer them a cup, and they would pour it, and, if it, and they would pour it half full. But if they poured it to the point of overflowing, it meant stay. We want you to stay. Stay as long as you want. We want you in our life. And that is what Jesus does. He comes and he pours overflowing because he wants you to dwell with him. He wants to dwell with you. This is, this, this is the symbolism behind all of this. Christ came and drank from this cup of suffering so your life would overflow. He said, I have come that you might have life and have it abundant. And what is it that he pours into your life? What is it he pours into your life? Yes, blessings. But I want to tell you the best blessing of all is the blessing of the Holy Spirit. He comes and he pours the Holy Spirit in you so that it has, so you overflow with love. You overflow with joy. You overflow with peace. You overflow with patience. You overflow with goodness. You overflow with gentleness. You overflow with self-control. I get chills thinking about it. So in closing, I'm going to ask you today, is your cup half empty or is it half full? Or does it run over? You know, some, of, some people are, are guilty of being, and we all are at times, being a sheep who is guilty of thinking the pasture over there is greener. Amen? And when we do that, we're looking at our glass half empty Sometimes, instead of half full. And when, in fact, for many of us, it's overflowing. When you walked in here today, did you ever, did you really truly believe, did you feel my cup overflows today? It overflows with love. It overflows with joy. It overflows with blessings. It overflows. I can't control it because my life is overflowing with all this wonderful stuff in my life. Did you? That's because that's what it is. Your love, your life does overflow. And the enemy wants to trick you and steal your joy. He wants to take away those things. He wants you to look at your cup the wrong way and blind you to the fact that it's overflowing. So, some people do lack. Some people have not accepted the Lord. Some people have not let the Holy Spirit in their life to overflowing. Some people have kept him at arm's length. Some people are looking at their glass half empty. But I ask that the Holy Spirit today will fill your heart will fill your heart to the point of overflowing. And then what he does, in no matter what life throws at you, you'll be able to say, no matter what state I find myself, therewith I am content and I am blessed. You'll be able to say all things work together for good for those who love the Lord. You see, God is not a stingy God. He gives, 
press down, shaking together, and overflowing. Even in the valley of the shadow of death, because that's the context of this verse. Even in the valley of the shadow of death, my cup runs over. Even in the valley of the shadow of death, my joy is pressed down, shaken together, and overflowing. Even in the valley of the shadow of death, I have peace pressed down, shaken together, and overflowing. And even in the valley of the shadow of death, I have love pressed down, shaken together, and overflowing. So Holy Spirit, Good Shepherd, open up these hearts. Help them to turn their cup up. Turn their cup up. Turn their cup up and fill it, fill it, fill it. Fill it with your presence, Holy Spirit. Fill it with your power, Holy Spirit. Fill it with your fruit, Holy Spirit. Fill it, fill it, not half full, not even to the brim, but overflowing, overflowing, overflowing. May our lives overflow with your love. May our lives overflow with your joy. May our lives overflow with your mercy and grace. May our lives overflow with you. Your cup runs over, even in the valley of the shadow of death. Hallelujah. Please stand for the benediction. And don't forget to join us for our volunteer appreciation right after this. We want to say thank you to you. But now may the Lord bless you and keep you. May the Lord make his face to shine upon you and be gracious unto you. May he lift up his countenance upon you and give you peace that passes all understanding. May he give you faith that is unshakable, hope that's unsinkable, and love that's unquenchable. God loves you. I do too. Amen. Shout
Come on, let's not forget to go out right around and have a wonderful meal and a wonderful time. God bless you. We'll see you next week.